we're really excited to actually be joined by a guest speaker of ours tonight. And <clears throat> Alex Resnick uh, from Evolve Leadership. He actually is a part of the Founders Live family. So, so excited to have Alex here. And I'm going to pop him on the screen there. Alex Resnick, how are you doing tonight? I am good. How are you guys? Um, hey, we're, we're hanging in there. time already. <laughs> we're doing all right. Um, but hey, this is this is Founders Live Center Stage. This is one of the first shows we've done. We're excited to bring this to the world. And uh, fairly soon, it's going to be in front of a lot more people. Luckily, tonight's more of a beta test. And tonight is working through some technical issues. But, you know, um, so happy to have you here. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, sales strategies for startups that actually work. And before we get going, um, brief introduction of yourself and, and Evolve Leadership. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, so my name is Alex Resnick. I'm the founder and president of Evolve Leadership. Uh, we basically help founders and startups develop their sales processes and train on sales and communication skills. Um, I personally have been in the sales and business development world for about 15 years on the corporate side and then also went off and started some of my own businesses, worked for some startups and built out some business units. And throughout that entire time, the thing I was most passionate about was was the training and the coaching and the mentoring of other sales reps. And then as I went into more management roles, um, you know, helping build out the systems and processes. And so a few years ago, I had the opportunity to go off on my own and work directly with uh, with founders and growing startups. And so about two years ago, Evolve Leadership was born. And so here we are. So great. Um, you know, we want to jump in and, you know, hopefully we have enough time for this uh, in terms of the, 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 the stuff that we really want to talk about. But, you know, you evolve leadership, you have tremendous sales experience. Um, you know, we want to dive into, especially for startups and founders, just sales strategies. And first question here is, what would you say is the most common traps that founders fall into, especially, you know, biggest mistakes that you see when, you know, they're just starting their journey and they're, they're just starting to build out their, pro their, their approach and process to sales? Yeah, so I work with a lot of early stage founders through to maybe they're ready to raise capital or maybe they're doing about maybe six figures or coming on six, seven figures in, uh, in revenue. And in that space, I see a lot of founders fall into the same traps. Um, there's a lot of them out there, um, but I want to focus on just a couple for the purposes of tonight. And I know we don't have a lot of time. And a big one is a lot of founders I see avoid doing the selling themselves. They may have come from a technical background. Maybe they didn't come from a sales background. They have a good idea for a product. And they're hoping that, one, somehow when I build this product and I set up a website, it's somehow magically going to sell itself. Absolutely not the case. I think one of the most misleading quotes of our generation is from uh, Field of Dream. If, if you build it, they will come. That is absolutely not true. I wish it was the case, but it's not. And so the thing that I would encourage all founders to do, whether you're technical, you're project management, you're, you uh, came from the marketing side, it does not matter if you're the founder and it's your product, you or someone on the co-founding team has to do the selling in the beginning. And the reason why is because you have to be the one talking to your customers. You're going to be the most passionate more than any other sales rep that you might hire. But also you have to have a proven sales process created and then ultimately it becomes repeatable before you hire a sales rep. And so that's one of the first traps that I see is avoid doing the selling themselves. Um, the second one, which actually kind of piggybacks on that, is I see a lot of founders um, and early stage startups hire sales reps too quickly. And so kind of to continue what I was just saying, they'll hire a sales professional thinking that the sales rep can build out these sales systems. Hey, you know, here's my product. Go figure out how to sell it. The reality is that is either a very special, talented and experienced person who's going to cost you a lot. They probably need some equity and they need to come in more as like a VP of sales or it's someone who's going to give you a lot of lip service telling you that they can do all those things. The reality is that they can't. They try to sell it. A few months go by. There's no real results. And three or six months later, you're back exactly where you started. When you're hiring a sales rep, you must have some sort of sales process already in place that you can plug a sales professional into and they can continue on to prove out that process. And so I cannot stress that enough. 
do not put the cart before the horse. You got to do the selling yourself and don't hire a sales rep too quickly. And then the third thing that I see is a lot of founders, and I fell into this trap too with previous businesses that I started. I have, you, you avoid talking to customers and getting real customer feedback. There's a couple of different reasons for this. I think for some reason, talking to customers can feel a little scary, but I think one of them is we hold our product ideas so close to our, to our hearts, right? We hold it so close to the vest because it's this thing that we think is so great. We have this idea. Oh my God, I have this new idea. I can leave my corporate job. I'm going to start a startup now. It's going to be the best software ever. And maybe that's all true. But in the beginning, we're very protective of it because it's our baby. And we're afraid to hear maybe the brutally honest truth that no one really cares about it, which can be you know, a, a tough pill to swallow. And so it's very, very important that in the beginning, you have a lot of conversations with people and you say, hey, this is what I'm working on. What is some of your feedback on it? And you want to have conversations with people who are in your target market, people that you would ultimately sell to, and let them tell you about the challenges of their world and then how they see your product either fitting in or what changes they might like to see to your product so that they would be interested in using it. You get all this feedback early. You make iterations. Drop your ego. Don't, <laughs> don't get offended by what you hear and just look for feedback in the beginning. I yeah. cannot stress that one enough. Yeah. So important. Um, <laughs> you and know, Luis, a lot of us know that, and, and yet sometimes it's hard to ask for that, and or hard to oh. take it, hard to listen. Those are those are some of the humility lessons um, founders have to, uh, you know, force themselves into. Um, that's a good thing, though. Yeah, absolutely. And we and there's a lot of things with uh, I think with sales and entrepreneurship that we kind of know. We've read about it. We've heard it. We've seen it in an online course. We've heard some other you know successful entrepreneur tell us about it. But the reality is we don't act in accordance with a lot of the things that we know and, mm -hmm. and there's you know without getting too deep on this whole topic there's a number <laughs> of different reasons for that but if i could if i could stress anything it's approaching your sales with us with a perspective of self-awareness your whole business and your whole life is self-awareness but especially your sales and being brutally honest and looking for feedback and objective uh objective feedback and constructive criticism awesome rules to live by you know, Alex, what would you suggest? What are your advice for maybe more technical founders that um, either are, you know, maybe a bit fearful of, of sales, maybe just don't even know where to start? Uh, what would be your advice on a technical team that needs to get going on that? Yeah, so I would I would encourage again, this is one of those where there's a number of things that I, that I would train on uh, for, with my clients, but I would strongly encourage um you put your customer first, and I know that that sounds like a cliche, but really, truly understand your customer. Understand, and, and when, with it's, when it comes to understanding your customer, that could be different job functions within an organization if you sell into B2B, for example, right? And so if you're selling HR software, there could be an HR administrator, there could be a director of HR, VP, all the way up to chief HR officer, CHRO they're all responsible for different things. They're all accountable for different things in their day to day. And so based on what you're selling and who you're selling it to, you wanna truly understand your customer, the pain, the frustrations, the things they're accountable for in their daily life. An HR administrator might be more accountable for the tasks of how things get executed, whereas the HR, let's say the CHRO, you're gonna talk more about how your product or service impacts the big vision of the company, the strategic initiatives of their employees. They're different conversations. So first, really own knowing your customer. Great way to do that, going back to what I said earlier, feedback, Just start talking to folks. Another thing that I would strongly encourage is that you, I mean, I would write this down on your mirror. I would post this everywhere. Commit to developing your self-awareness and your communication skills. Regardless of your background, regardless of if you grew up maybe shy or an introvert or any of the labels that we have right now, anyone can develop communication skills. It is a skill. It is not a talent that everyone's born with. And being a great communicator doesn't have to mean that you're extroverted. It doesn't mean you have to have gift to gab. You don't need to be the funniest person in the room. Being a great communicator is connecting with other people, making them feel heard and understood and being a great listener. And so a good way to practice, and then also when it is time to speak, being concise and clear. And so what I would strongly encourage you to do is if maybe communication and some of these sales meetings feels a little bit stressful, the way to practice this is think about what you know about your ideal customer, 
what are the challenges that they experience in their life and then prepare your messaging and your questions accordingly. And so that way you have a game plan when you go into customer conversations with a short, concise message for tailored for your audience that you've practiced, literally practice it like an actor and questions that you know are going to lead the conversation in an intentional way. And then after you ask a question, just pause and listen. You don't need to be chatty. You don't need to be super talkative to be a great communicator, but I would put Oh, did, did well, Alex pause at the? We'll, we'll, at we'll the get him moment. back. Um, I fully <laughs> agree with Alex there. I fully agree that you know you gotta listen. You gotta really, um, really ask great questions and then listen to your customers' answers. Uh, Luis, what do you think about that? Yeah, I love that. I I like what Alex is doing here though. He's 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 saying something that you know might that he's acknowledging we've all heard and we know, um, but then he's pairing this up with with uh, an action point to take. Things that um, things that we can actually do in a real world sense to make sure that we're following through on those things that we know we should be doing. Um, I think that that uh, you know, taking it all at a zoom out level to be like learn learn communication skills, learn um, learn how to make yourself better uh, better listener, and all these other things. They're they're those are things that help you in so many different ways. It's so awesome for him to call that out. Alex is back. Hey man. Um, you, uh, did, did everyone cut did out there? Did we lose today. everybody, or was it just me? It, it, just well, you. <laughs> it was just you, but I can tell you right now, um, Luis. Remember earlier today? It's like okay, the tech gods are doing their thing. And um, side note, everyone, and this, I don't, we will not get off tangent on this, but I was reading that there was a big solar flare um, from the oh, sun wow. that was happening this week, and you know, things happen, right? Like those are like electrical storms and stuff. So we're probably getting hit. It's all good. Um, we have about four minutes left. Uh, um, Alex, you know, is there a, is there a question that I didn't ask that you'd love to answer? So ask a question and answer your own question. When I want to answer hear that. my own question. Um, I think I have a hunch that people are all aware of the, terms self-awareness and emotional intelligence and you know oh like it's all good to, to develop those things but i feel like people don't really like a lot of people i felt this way earlier on where it's like well how do i really uh, go about developing these skills like what does it yeah. mean to raise your emotional intelligence what does it mean to become more self-aware and so the the simplest thing that i would recommend people do that has a significant impact that you could do in real time when it comes to like to be deepening your self-awareness, basically more awareness of who you truly are and more awareness of how you show up for other people. What is other people's experience of talking to you? The best way to get clarity on who you are and then how you show up for others is through observation. So you can observe your own thoughts, emotions, feelings, things that you're thinking by just journaling at the end of the day. How did today go? What did I do? Well, what did I do that I could have maybe done better? Use questions like that to prompt you so you start to write. 20 minutes of writing will change your whole world in terms of reflection, uh, uh, I'm sorry, clarity yeah. on things that you really want, thing, who you really are, what you really care about. And then as it relates to showing up for others, um, I got feedback from a coach a couple of years ago that you know I have to intentionally soften my brow and talk slower because believe it or not, I actually talk twice as fast as this at my normal pace because I'm from New Jersey and I want to just get everything done. Blah, 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 blah. And then I also can do this thing where I look at people like this and I had a coach who was like, you know, you're looking at people like you're going to like, <laughs> and I, and in my world, I'm like in a good mood, like not thinking anything's negative, but I'm coming up <laughs> like, what are you, how's your day going? You know? And yeah. so some, so some of the things that you can do to, to show up for people in a more effective way, compassionate way, whatever it might be, is just simply record your calls, record your Zoom calls, or if you're running sales calls in, in person, hopefully that kind of you know comes back a little bit, but even though Zoom's more efficient, um, record your calls or run meetings with a, with a counterpart who can give you honest feedback and not stroke your ego feedback, honest feedback at the end of a meeting. <laughs> I still do that to this day, and I've been in sales for 15 years. I run a lot of our larger client opportunities with a consultant partner, and right away at the end, all right, how, how do you think that went? How could we have done better? What did we do well? Yeah. 
what could we improve on? And so I know that that's probably advice we've heard for years, but a lot of people will graze over it. Most people who hear this right now won't, won't do it, won't do it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm telling you, it's the powerful stuff right there. But, uh, you know, we can see right here, Gary Malcolm, thank you for mentioning, uh, looking at communication really as a practice. And so you don't have to be perfect. It's an evolving thing, you know, maybe yes. even evolving leadership, <laughs> but it's, um, you know, that's what communication is. And I think what, what you just mentioned, Alex, was like being open to that feedback, which is not easy. You know, it's not easy to ask the questions and then be ready for the honest answers. And, you know, we're, we're all in that place. Um, yeah. So I want to want to bring up here uh, last before we drop off Evolve Leadership dot co um any thoughts what you'd like to share with us around the website what would you, you know people can reach out how did how, how would you instruct them to go about that yeah you can follow us on all social channels at evolve leadership llc so linkedin uh instagram and facebook uh we're going to start and also youtube we're going to start putting a lot more free content out there around communication skills for sales and for leaders um we also Love the personal development stuff as well. So um, career development, professional development, leadership development type content. Um, if you're a founder or you're part of a startup team and you're looking to improve, create or improve your sales processes, how you go to market, um, how you secure meetings, close clients, et cetera, or looking for training or coaching on sales, communication skills, asking good questions, overcoming rejections, closing, things like that. Those are kind of our, our kind of that's our bread and butter there. So we work with founders and, and growing startups in that capacity. Awesome. And Alex, well, you have a you have an academy class coming up. Is that right? Yes. Next Thursday, we have a founders live free training. The topic. Um, let's see. The the topic is, the oh, you put it in the chat there. Yeah. So it's basically a new approach to selling that actually works. Um, I like to throw out a lot of the get rid of the old sales cliches that cloud our judgment um, a lot of people think uh you know when we think of sales we think of this lazy you know used car salesman sorry used car salesman for you guys always get the, the tough end of this exam this uh analogy here but um sales really especially in b2b especially if you're a founder it's much more about consultative problem solving asking good questions and connecting with your customer and so next week's training is going to be um, some techniques and some tools that you guys can implement in your business right away um, to improve those areas. So it's totally free. It's a Founders Live free training next Thursday, 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. Um, and we'll put a link to it uh, in the show later. Awesome. Also find it on LinkedIn. Well, we love well, you doing this for us. It's great. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, doing it. 